network covalent solids, carbon and silicates. Now we will discuss a different sort of solid. These are network covalent solids. We're gonna talk about a couple of different types of network covalent compounds. I've chosen carbon and silicon to talk about, but there are of course many different types. These just tend to come up a lot in life and so I think they're interesting to discuss here. Let's start with carbon. Carbon has many different allotropes or forms that it can exist in. Two of its most common are diamond and graphite. Though both of these are made of carbons bonded covalently to each other, they certainly have very different types of characteristics. Graphite forms sheets of molecules, and these sheets can slide across each other, giving it the properties that we think of graphite as having. Diamond, on the other hand, compared to graphite is way harder, where graphite is quite soft. And this is because diamond is tetrahedrally bound to four other carbons, and this creates this covalently bonded three-dimensional network, and it's incredibly strong compared to the graphite sheets, which are able to kind of move across each other because the graphite sheets are actually just held together by dispersion forces. Carbon can also form several other types of structures that are kind of similar to graphite. One that you may have heard of is a buckyball. And these look like soccer balls. The shape is a soccer ball. And this is a carbon allotrope that clusters together because of very high dispersion forces. And they are naturally found in deposits of soot, but we can also make them synthetically. Something else that we do with carbon allotropes are called carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are created from hexagons that are in a long tube. It kind of looks like chicken wire if you want to think about it like that. These can be synthesized in very different diameters and other ligands can actually be attached to the tubes. So these have some very interesting properties that make them very lightweight and they can also be used um, in a lot of different electronics. So currently the, you can look at using them in x-rays, biosensors, bendable electronics, and maybe someday even a space elevator. Silicon and oxygen also form covalent compounds. Silicates are composed of silicon and oxygens, where the oxygens are bonded in a tetrahedral geometry around the silicon. There are different forms that form slightly different structures, and that's why we have all of these different types that I've shown here. Additionally, if you heat these silicates and you cool them in a very particular manner, they can form an amorphous solid rather than a network covalent solid. So amorphous just means no defined shape. And this is what gives you glass, and that's what we call quartz glass. So in review, there's many types of covalently networked species, and we've talked about the allotropes of carbon and silicates, but of course many different types of these as well.